Good evening, everyone, and welcome to the Anchor Light Meditation. So, hope you guys are ready for more meditation. We did it this morning, and um, you're wondering how come we're doing music and chanting before, because there's a delay on the screaming. So a lot of times I get started, and people say, "Hey, I didn't hear the first part." So if we're playing music. Then the ones who are there already can bliss out with the music, and the ones who are you know, on their way, you won't be late. So that's why. It's a practical side. Uh, and some of you are asking, hey, what is that music? It's actually a mantra. It's, uh, it's called the Vajra Guru Mantra, which is the mantra to Guru Padmasambhava, the teacher who brought Buddhism to Tibet. He is Grand Master Joy Spiritual Teacher. And so I'm playing that music at the same time meditating so that... Uh, you know, when um, we guide you in meditation, uh, you know, energy is flowing through me. It's basically my preparation. Okay, anyway, so let's just talk a little bit, just quickly about mantras, just to, because a lot of people say, oh, mantra, you know, what is this? We beat mantra. Somebody taught this, taught me this mantra is so powerful. Okay, <clears throat> let's look, let's get down to the science of it. In order for a mantra to work, you need two components, Okay. One component is has to be there has to be an energy source. In other words, the mantra has to have energy. You cannot just you know out of nowhere say, "Okay, uh, paper is now a mantra." Yeah, people know what paper is, but it hasn't exactly been loaded with spiritual energy. <laughs> you get the point. So a mantra is something it has to have energy. So let's say you have Om Om Mani Padme Hum. You know different mantras that have been chanted for thousands of years by millions and millions of people. Just imagine every time people chant, there's a repository of that energy or depository, whichever, one of those two words. It's packed with so much spiritual energy. So when you chant that mantra, it's just like tapping into that cloud of energy. Okay? That's part one. Part two, the second component. You need a receptive subject. In other words, if I teach this person a mantra, I say, okay, chant, blah, 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 so on, so on, so on. And this person goes, I don't need in all that bull crap or whatever word <laughs> they're going to say. Then it's useless. You can teach him a mantra. He has a power source, but they're not receptive. It's just like you're plugging in, you know, your radio to the electrical outlet using a rubber wire. It's a complete waste of time. Because it's not conducting. That's one of the reasons why when people try to shove religion down your throat, what happens? Nothing. In fact, you rebel. So in order for a mantra to work, number one, it has to have energy. And number two, the person who wants to chant it or is being made to chant will at least be saying, okay, I'll give it a try. Minimum. Now, the more receptive they are, the more conductive they are. So it's just like... For example, you, have, you already have the electrical power station, right? So when you plug it in, your electrical appliance, if you plug it in with regular copper wire, hey, it conducts. Now, if you can find super high-quality copper wire or gold or silver, which are even more conductive, it's the same power source. The power source didn't start, uh, didn't change. But the amount of current flowing through is more, right? So the quality of the wire it becomes more conductive. Then you widen the cable. So instead of an itty bitty cable, you put a cable this big of copper or gold or what or silver, something that's super conductive. So the power source didn't change. It's still there. But the difference is you are now more conductive because of the quality of the material plus the width of the pipeline. Now, how does that relate to our spiritual practice? Same thing. If you're going to pick a mantra, don't pick a mantra that you know nobody has ever heard of unless it's been charged by a powerful being or a powerful teacher that has meditated on it and been meditated by their teacher for the last thousand years. It's just kept secret because it's held in secret. But if somebody just made it up, oh, today I'm going to chant. Blah, 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 blah. Okay, chant it a thousand times. Who cares? This is how much energy, especially if the person who's chanting it, the one who taught it to you, if their life is a mess, okay, complete waste of time. Now, if you chant something like Om Mani Padme Hum, Om Mani Padme Hum has been chanted by, who knows, hundreds of millions of people with such intense devotion and so much energy packed in, and it's connected to great spiritual teachers. Just imagine in the inner worlds, in the inner universe, there's this 
ginormous energy source, like a miniature sun or a gigantic energy sun, that every time you chant it, you tap into that power source. That's part one. Part two, you're receptive, so the energy flows through you. And there's also another part, which is connected to number one, which is the power source, the meaning of that mantra. If that mantra has a particular meaning to it, like Om Mani Padme Hum, Om is the universal sum, Mani is the jewel, Padme is the, the flower, Hum is like, so be it. Okay, this is a book, by the way, if you guys want to know more, this is written by my teacher, Grandmaster Master Chua Om Mani Padme Hum, and it's connected to the, to the Mother of Compassion, the Buddhist tradition, Buddha Kuan Yin. So it goes in detail. So now you have several things in mind uh, that you're dealing with. You have the power source, People have been meditating and chanting for thousands of years. There's already a lot of power and energy. Then you have an understanding of what the mantra means. Now, once you understand the mantra, when you're doing the chanting, it becomes, it makes you even more receptive, more conducted, because you know what it means. So now, in addition to the power source, there's certainty. Put those two together, and you're super receptive. <clears throat> massive explosion of energy in a good way. That's it. So if somebody says, oh, I got a secret mantra and blah, blah, blah. I go, okay, how many people are chanting? I don't know. I made it up yesterday and when I was in the toilet. Oh, okay, keep it to yourself. <laughs> so many years ago, there's this, uh, one of my colleagues was doing a joke. Okay. <laughs> he, he pulled a few students and go, I'm going to teach you a powerful mantra. And so the students being receptive go, okay, what is it? Repeat after me. So my colleague goes, ready? Yes, we're ready. Okay, ready? Here we go. Wada. So you go, oh, wada. Oh, some ancient language. Wada. Okay, next syllables. Dhamma. Dhamma, right? Dhamma. Wada. Dhamma. Asiam. Asiam. Wow, man. What? Wada. Damasiam. Then by the time they chanted over there, Wada. Damas. I am. <laughs> <laughs> At first you go, wow, this is ancient, what a damasem. Basically, what a damas I am. So I don't think you want that mantra, <laughs> okay? So don't be so gullible just because somebody says, oh, you come to my organization, we'll teach you this mantra. And you go, what does that mean? Don't ask, just trust. That's not me. I'm an engineer. If I don't understand it, I kiss it goodbye. You get, but you, how come you're not so? You, how come you're not trusting? I'm not. You're so cynical. Yes. I'd rather be cynical than be fooled. Yeah, but you're not trusting. You know, faith requires this. Look, faith doesn't mean that you leave your brain in the toilet or in the car. Spirituality has to make sense. That's why when people come to you, I trust whatever you say. I go, go find another teacher. Why? I'm receptive. No, I want you to use your head. <laughs> My teacher, when I first came to Pranic Healing, he said, you don't have to believe everything the teacher says. You understand the information, the teachings, you analyze it, you do your experiment, then you make your own conclusion. I go, okay, now I'm staying. Now, if you tell me, if, he, if I come, he says, just trust me. I said, yep, I'll trust you. I'll leave the door. <laughs> I'll, leave, I'll close the door on my way out. You get my point? So the key in your spiritual practice is not just to follow blindly. Follow blindly is often, uh, often happens to people. They go like this. They go, yeah, but you know, I really need help, so I'm going to trust. Trusting does not mean you don't think. You trust in the sense that you, okay, this person wants to help me. Uh, they're giving me this information. Does it make sense? Do I see that? It can help me in whatever I'm going through. Okay. Then I'm going to try it. I'm going to test it. See, how, see what the results are. Then I keep going. It's no sin to use your brain. <laughs> because some people say, yeah, but you know, if you're spiritual, you have to trust everything. Yeah. That's the fastest way to get fooled. Especially in the spiritual realm. And the way my teacher explained it, it's like this. He said, 
just because a butcher, I'm not talking about butcher as in somebody who just cuts meat, you know, figuratively speaking, a butcher is somebody who's a bad person who kills a lot of people. He goes, just because a butcher dies, they don't suddenly become an Einstein. In other words, if somebody dies, the body dies, and now they're speaking to you from the other side through a channel, to a channel, a medium, or in your dream, it doesn't leave suddenly they're a saint or they're a genius. The only thing that's different is they don't have a physical body. So you still have to discern what they say. Yeah, but you know, they're speaking from in the energy world. Yeah, at least in the physical world, you have FCC that you cannot do or say stupid things over the air. In the energy world, anything goes. So it's up to you to polish your mind to understand. That's why, if you remember, the Lord Jesus taught. The Lord Buddha taught. You know, Muhammad, Prophet Muhammad taught. All these great teachers taught because you have a brain. You understand it. You use it to help people. If you follow blindly, well, you hear about the Kool-Aid, right? <laughs> That's one of the reasons why a lot of us in our younger days uh, gotten hurt because we trusted, we didn't think. True? Especially if you're young on the spiritual path, somebody tells you, okay, come over. Let me teach you this. Let me teach you that. And, you, and you're so receptive because you don't know any better. So what happens? We do stupid things. I remember one time uh, I was with my teacher. He was saw me wearing a bunch of other stuff all over my shirt, right? You know, like this, med this medallion, this, this, you know, this necklace and these beads and whatever. I look like Mr. T for spirituality. He looked at me like I was, huh, you're getting very superstitious, huh? Uncle Master? Look, you're wearing all that stuff. Do you really need that to be spiritual? Uh, Master, this has energy, that energy, that's energy. Uh-huh. Okay. Then he walks away. <laughs> that's, that's all he does. He walks away. I'm going, he's trying to tell me something. Do I need this? No. Do I need this? No. Do I need this? No. That's true, huh? They're just decorations on a tree. Get the idea? Sometimes you get fixated. Oh, I have to have, have this crystal. I have to have this. I have to have that. Not realizing it is the spiritual being that's meditating. It doesn't mean that if you're not wearing that necklace or that ring, that you won't be able to experience oneness with God. Ouch. I know some of you are probably going to turn this off now because you know you don't understand. Oh, yeah, you're right. I don't understand because I've been there. I have a closet full of stuff. Then the more I meditate, the more I do my spiritual practice, over a period of time, the more I realize those do not define my spirituality. My practice defines my spirituality. What I do with it defines my spirituality. The service I do defines my spirituality. Not the kinds of clothes I wear, the necklace I wear, the rings, the whatever stuff. All those are outside decorations. What's important is who I am. That's that. Now, does that mean you don't take care of the body? No, you take care of the body. Does that mean you don't wear jewelry? Yeah, you wear jewelry. Because certain jewelries, for example, the right rings will trigger certain chakras. As long as you understand what you're doing, and you're doing it for a particular purpose, and it does not control you. In other words, oh man, I can't meditate, I don't have my special necklace. Then you're screwed. That means your entire spiritual practice is dependent on that necklace. However, that's different where, oh, I don't have my necklace. You know, when I meditate, I notice that it's a little stronger. Okay, that's fine, I'll do it next time. So that means that, means that it is an enhancement but your spiritual practice does not depend on it. Make sense? You have everything within you. You are made in the image of God. Everything else is basically to accessorize, to enhance, to accelerate, to amplify. You see, when you say amplify, amplify doesn't mean that's the source of the energy. Amplifying is there's already a source. You're just making it stronger. If you don't have a spiritual practice, all those necklaces, crystals, shawls, and everything else that you buy and you load yourself with it, you just wasted money. <laughs> After all, you go, 
nobody's watching me. I'm wearing all this stuff, nobody's watching me. He looked in your mirror and he goes, what the heck have I paid all this for? It doesn't do anything. Exactly. But if you've been doing your spiritual practice, you go, you know, I went to a pilgrimage and I noticed this shawl was given to me by the Dalai Lama and it's loaded with energy. Oh, I'm going to wear it when I meditate. On days, oh, I forgot to wear this. It's okay, I'll do it when I, when I have it. In the meantime, I'll do my meditation. That's the proper attitude. So you're not dependent on anything. In other words, if you're by yourself in the middle of nowhere and you don't have your CD, you don't have your sound, music, no, nothing, you can go to that inner stillness. If you can't, Something's wrong. That means you're attached to something. That means the soul is entangled with something or an idea that will hold it down to prevent it from going to the higher worlds or experience oneness with God. If in order for you to spiritually develop, you have to wear something, have to, then that becomes something that pulls you down. That's why when it comes to a mantra, as you're chanting the mantra, at some point, you have to stop chanting the mantra. Because at some point, the mantra becomes something that prevents you from expanding. Because in order for you to chant the mantra, you have to use your body to chant. Right? To chant verbally. Or you have to chant silently. Either way, you're doing something. So that means you're engaging your body, your emotions, and your thoughts. So you would not be able to let go. Even something like that, at a certain level, have to be dropped. So you, for you to experience who you are. That's that. Simple. Shall we meditate? So what we're going to do, we're going to chat Om. We'll guide you through it. We'll chant Om Mani Padmi Hum. And then after the meditation, we use that energy to bless the earth. Okay? So it's a little different. Normally at night we do Om Mani, uh, we do the Great Invocation. But since we talk about mantra, we will chant Om. And then from there, we'll see where we can go with it. Okay? You guys ready? <clears throat> Alright, let's ask for divine blessing. To the divine Supreme God, divine Father, divine Mother, to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, and spiritual helpers, Personally, to my beloved teacher, Master Tuakok Sui Mahagu Jumailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love, guidance, help, healing, and divine protection. Thank you. In full faith, so be it. All right, sit comfortably. Now, I don't know who's around you, so you don't have to chant really loud. You don't need to wake up the entire neighborhood. <laughs> okay, just chant enough that you, as you chant it, you understand what it is, which is you're connecting to the universal energy, ocean of energy, and... You're chanting in such a way that you're allowing that energy of the chant to vibrate through your body. That's it. Okay? Now, how you sit, how you stand, whatever, don't lay down. Just lay down, guaranteed you'll be snoring. Okay? That's a different mantra. <laughs> that's, that's not the mantra we're looking for. Okay? So sit comfortably. <clears throat> Close your eyes. Stop typing so you can chant. <laughs> Om. Let the energy flow through your body.
Now you will chant silently. I'll still chant verbally to guide you, but you'll do this silently now. Just stay in that space before the next home. now drifting into that empty space and filling it. Stay there. Attention to just drift deeper and deeper into that space, drift deeper into that nothingness. Now, You're swimming that energy now. Let 
go. intensify it Gently, slowly, gently and slowly move your fingers, move your toes, very gently and slowly, come back to your body, <coughs> come on, come back. Now raise your hands. We're going to release the excess energy our bodies cannot absorb. When you do that meditation, remember, <clears throat> we said this a few weeks ago. When it comes to physical energy, you jump around all that you have physical energy. Right? Emotional, same thing with emotional energy. The more you engage in it, the more movement you have, the more energy, that type of energy you have. When it comes to spiritual energy, it's the complete opposite. When it comes to spiritual energy, the more you can make your body, your emotions, and your mind still, the more intense the spiritual energy. It's a complete opposite. That's when people say, oh, I'm being spiritual. No. When you want to really harness massive amount of spiritual energy, as in <laughs> thermonuclear, you have to go really deep, deep, deep stillness. That's the only way the energy can really conduct. So although the meditation was, I was looking at it, somewhere like seven, eight minutes of stillness. That's all we did. You go, really? Yep, that's only seven, eight minutes, the most. Get the idea? So that's where the real power is, stillness. So when you do this, you all expand, who knows how huge. 
So afterwards, we want to release the excess energy by blessing. Otherwise, you get congested. Okay? <clears throat> we don't hoard energy. We share it. So put your hand like this. First, visualize all the people in your life that you love. Fill them with golden light. May all of them be blessed with good health, with happiness, with prosperity, and spiritual oneness. So be it. Bless them with lots of love, joy, happiness, and spiritual energy. Now, bless your job, your career, with success, with progress, with advancement, and also prosperity. So be it. Bless the city you live in, the state, the country, with lots of golden light. May all be blessed. So be it. Now, aim your hands down. Put your attention on your feet, the base of your spine, and your hands. And just flood the earth below us with golden light. And verbally repeat after me. Let our beloved Mother Earth be blessed with divine light, divine love, and divine power. Let our beloved Mother Earth be healed, regenerated, and revitalized. Blessings be to Mother Earth. So be it, so be it, and so it is. All right, let's give thanks to the Divine Supreme God, Divine Father, Mother. Thank you to all the spiritual elders, holy masters, saints, archangels, holy angels, spiritual helpers. Personally, to my beloved teacher, Grand Master Twa Hok Sui, Mahaguji Mailing, we thank you for divine light, divine love. Thank you for guidance. Thank you for help and divine protection. We thank you in full faith. So be it. Om. Amen. Amin. Tatastu. And so it is. All right. So how was your seven, eight minute meditation? No music, no anything. Pure stillness. Now, I know some of you are probably squirming. Some of your mind is too busy. That's perfectly understandable. You know, not everybody can practice stillness right away. Everybody can, but it's the amount of time taken to get there. So before we finish, just to give you some tips, we got, because usually the, the comment that we always say is, oh, I cannot quiet my mind, I keep thinking of dinner, I think of this and that. Understandable. Two things are happening. Number one, most likely before we did our meditation, your mind... Your emotions were really distracted, so your energy was there. So you generate a lot of this emotional, mental energy that's still sitting in your aura. So the minute we want you to become still, you can't because all this energy crowds your consciousness. So the way to get around it is before we do our meditation, you do some physical exercises to kind of get rid of it, right? Not all of it, a lot of it. And then uh, if you're doing meditation twin hearts, the act of blessing cleanses the aura. When you're doing the chanting, if you really put your attention on the chant rather than Om... What am I going to have for dinner tonight? Oh, um, not going to work. So what happens is, there's a saying, mantras protect the mind. Okay? The mantras protect the mind. So what you do is this. When you're chanting, or you want to meditate, you chant. As soon as your mind wanders, you don't say, I don't want to think about that. Because the moment, the moment you do that, that thing gets stronger. You hear what I just said? If you're meditating, you're, oh, yeah, man, I, I got to do this, I got to do that. I don't want to think about that. That's it. You're dead. You know why? Because the minute that you don't want to think about it, the more energy you put into it. So the way you do it is as simple as this. Om. Your mind's wandering, right? Okay, what am I going to do now after this? You just watch it. Remember, you're the soul. You're the spiritual being. You created those thoughts and emotions. You just watch it. Oh, yeah, you know, hmm, thinking about dinner, thinking about this, thinking, oh, interesting. Om. In other words, you observe it and then immediately go back to your, to your chanting or your meditation. At some point, since you didn't feel it energy, it starves and dissipates. That's that. Finish. Make sense? I mean, I've had people, I remember many years ago, I was uh, invited to, um, what is it called? Y, YFO or something, I forgot. What it is? It's an organization of a bunch of uh, super achievers, and I was supposed to give them some technique on meditation. YFO, I forgot what it was. Anyway, and so there's this guy, he was the host, right? One of the, he, husband and wife, he was the host. This guy is like ADD on steroids. I see like, that's how he was like the whole time. So we're going to have dinner before we did. We had that big meeting. The mayor, no, the chief of police was there, a bunch of CEOs, owners of banks, CEO. And there's this guy. And I'm supposed to give a talk on how to calm your mind because these CEOs are stressed out of mind. All right. He was sitting in front of me, go, he looked at me literally in my face, he goes, I'll be your challenge. Because I've, I've never quieted my mind, and as you can tell, I'm talking, I'm like this. I mean, he literally, the whole time was like that. 
I'm going. I just kept quiet. First of all, he was waiting for a response. YPO, thank you very much. It's YPO. Okay. So I sat, I sat there. I watched him. Listen to the words I use. I watched him. I observed him. I did not engage him. Because he was asking for me to engage, to say, oh, yeah, I can do it. Then that means I would have been entangled. That means I would have had energy to his ADD. <laughs> Make sense? I go, oh, okay. Very interesting. You see, when you say very interesting, you're observing. Oh, this is interesting. Is that, I just, like, poker face. Very interesting. Hmm, okay. But, man, I really, you know, I've never been blah, blah, blah. He came on and on and go, interesting. Hmm, very interesting. Okay. Hey, can, can you pass me the salad? <laughs> Didn't bite. He's a nice guy, don't get me wrong, but he, he's he been like that, right? So, when we had that lecture, we had a short lecture telling him about meditation and chanting and a little bit about breathing and all that. So, I got him in this breathing meditation and a chanting. I made the chant so simple, there's nothing to think about. You see, one of the problems is if you make things so darn complicated, one of two things could happen. Some people will overthink the thing. That's why they won't be meditating. They'll be overthinking the thing. Or it's so complicated, you shut down. <laughs> you notice that? But I mean, it's so dumb normal, dumb easy. I mean, <laughs> there's nothing to think about. As simple as the OM. What's there to think of? OM. O-M. Okay. A-U-M. Okay. What else to think about? OM sounds like a voice. Sounds like a sound. So I... We, we say we, I'm not doing, they're helping me up there. We guided everybody into that nothingness like you guys did. <laughs> this guy was like, like this, suddenly was like this. Tick, tick. <laughs> Out. <laughs> and then when we came back, okay, everybody come back. The guy would not come back. And when he finally did, you just see that it's like, what happened? He's never experienced that in his life. To summarize it for you, technique matters. If you have the right technique, you have the right state that is instilled in you, anybody can experience stillness. Does that? So, anyway, thank you very much for joining me. It's a short session, I know, but some of you are still floating. Some of you are floating somewhere simultaneously. Your feet are on the ground. That's good. Enjoy. Just make sure you don't drive. In fact, after we're done, get up and do your physical exercises and everything, okay? And um, I think that's it. We will see you Friday. I'll be in Florida for Tony Robbins' uh, Date with Destiny. I know some of you are watching are probably going to be there anyway, so we will see you there uh, online or physical or whatever. And so we'll have Friday morning and fr Friday morning 10 a.m. and Friday evening 6 p.m., all California time. If there's any change because of my stage time, I'll let you guys know ahead of time. However... Keep this in mind. Friday is Emotional Healing Day. So Friday morning, 10 and 6 p.m., when we do this, make sure you have a bucket of salt water that you're going to put your feet in. Remember that? The ones who are joining us, this is based on the ancient teachings why the Lord Jesus washed the feet of the apostles. When he washes their feet, it's not to show hum humility only. It's basically when you clean the feet, the divine energy come down can go right through instead of bottlenecking. So we're using these same techniques to enhance your meditation. And when you do emotional cleansing, it's like emotional, energetic diarrhea. <laughs> okay? So if your feet are in salt water, just basically a bucket of salt water, one or two buckets with you know, one handful of salt with lavender oil, and whatever temperature is comfortable for you, when we do the meditation, as the energy flows down through you, all those negative energies are instantly disintegrated by the salt water. By the way, for some of you new, why salt water? Water absorbs the energy, salt breaks it down. Not Epsom salt, not magnesium sulfate, regular, regular NaCl, sodium chloride. You do I have to buy expensive, you know, Himalayan salt and this? No. Come on, me Chinese, we like bargain. Cheap is good. <laughs> Look, you will not buy a $10,000 toilet, will you? We you would buy a $10,000 trash can. Same thing, salt, you're just going to energetically pooping it, why pay so much money for it? Just regular cheap soap, dump it in, put your lavender oil, let's meditate. Okay? So that's Friday morning and Friday night. Um, that's it. Grab your friends, your loved ones. The more of us that do this, more energy flows through us. Okay. 
Namaste, everyone. You all take care. We will see you Friday morning. Take good care. Bye.